Hey, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is where I'm building my Rams S21. This is episode 27, and it'll be the first of, I'm sure, several if not many panel episodes. This is episode one of panel, where I'm going to uh, start with a panel. Um, this is probably the most unguided section of the build to date. And I understand why. There's a lot of different options, a lot of different panels, a lot of different choices. Uh, but this is the first time we really don't have a step-by-step -step or a guideline on what to do. Uh, so I'm admittingly a little overwhelmed by some of it. Um, going slow on it, doing more research than actual building, watching lots of videos. And to be honest, I have very little DC wiring experience. Maybe some trailer lights and some other stuff, but really I haven't done much DC wiring. And the complexity of an avionics package where everything's talking to everything and everything's connected and there's all kinds of uh, all kinds of things to hook up. Uh, I did have a panel company build the panel, uh, but there's still a lot to be done. Um, so I've mentioned in other videos of mine that uh, these are not instructional. I'm a first time builder and clearly in this section, this is not instructional. I'm just documenting what I'm doing. Uh, I do welcome input down in the comments section. So uh, with that, uh, let's unpack that panel and get started. Well, my panel showed up from my panel company. And when I first saw the crate coming off the truck, I thought it was my engine. I said, boy, I didn't expect my engine. Um, and that's correct. I shouldn't have expected my engine. It, it's my panel. Heck of a crate for a panel. Uh, so let's unbox it and see what we've got. We dig down a little deeper and I see the back of the panel, a lot of harnesses and wire and then obviously more components that are going to have to get attached. And let's, let's dig a little deeper and see what we can get. And there is the panel. Wow, that's good looking. I'm excited about that. I am really excited. Well, uh, I don't really want to admit, but this is a little intimidating. So you have a panel company build a panel, and you assume that most of the work is going to be done, which I assume it is. Uh, but what to do with all this is just going to be a big question. Uh, I think these are trim servos. Uh, GAD29 and GAE24. GTR20. Well, I, I'm guessing that's a uh, four-cylinder Continental Engine sensor kit. I got something figured out. GSU 25C. Uh, so we'll have to see where all this goes. I'm, I'm thrilled, uh, but slightly overwhelmed about what am I going to do with all this. Hopefully there's some instructions. But got to love it. Okay, we started with the uh, panel fit up to the frame, took the frame off the, the uh, cage. Uh, the one thing we're doing is testing for the fit. Everything fit except this corner right here. So we cut away the frame just a little bit to get it to fit. We also drilled, drilled out the frame for the uh, nut plates um, to make sure they were all lined up. Um, and... Uh, the other thing to oh, be, to note, the nut plate in the corner is not the typical wing nut plate. So this hole you drill, remember it's at the end of these two holes, not in the middle like the other ones. But other than that, with the fit up, uh, I think the next thing is we may, we may put the uh, nut screws in. I'm going to test fit the panel to make sure my radios clear the bars and that everything fits. And what I did is I couldn't find, this is a 1 8 hole. I didn't have a 1 8 bolt or anything, and I couldn't put a Clico in here because the panel wouldn't fit on. So I just used a 1 8 AVEX rivet, which I'll drill out later. I didn't want to use one of the stainless steel ones, but I used a 1 8 rivet uh, to hold this panel frame on. And then I'll put my panel in there and see how it fits. You look in this mass, all I've done is placed it in here. And I've seen other videos where people put brackets in, they put shelves in, and then they start mounting things. And let me kind of show you what that looks like. Included with the panel was this 
stack of additional boxes and instruments and I guess the first thing I need to do is kind of figure out what they are and then I got a folder with a lot of electrical wiring diagrams um, well I'm gonna get to work again on the panel I had taken a break and gone off to work on the belly fairings but in order to put the belly fairings on I think I need to have my boot cowl on and I'd rather leave this open right now for working on the panel um, and I've been looking at other builder videos and a lot of them are doing a really nice job um, and they're all doing a little bit differently and again it's not really a step-by-step -step. so I'm a little bit in the unknown here um, so I'm going to take it one step at a time I did contact my panel company he gave me a little bit of advice and then the Garmin manual that, that thousand page manual does list each component and a little bit of information about each one but it's not really a step-by-step -step installation so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my antenna runs because I need to get my antenna wire I don't even have uh, antenna cable and if you remember if I come back here I've got my GPS over there I've got a COM2 here transponder down by my servos and COM1 over here um, on the other side uh, the ELT came with antenna wire, so I've already run the ELT wire, uh, coax antenna wire, so that's done. So I've got a, I, I've measured out my runs, because I'm assuming everything's going to come back to the panel. And I've measured out, and it looks like I need about 40 feet of coax cable. Uh, I did add a little extra for each run, I think a foot or two on each run, so it might be a little, a little long. Um, but in looking at cable, I, I did a little research on it. I guess RG58 is what most of the old planes were done. Um, AC43 uh, and the Garmin manual and everything is calling for RG400, which is a braided coax cable, versus the RG142, which is a solid cable. And I guess that's better for longer runs, but the RG400 appears to be the standard for most small general aviation planes. Um, then the connectors is the next step. Uh, I guess there's uh, TNC and BNC connectors. The type that just kind of push in and twist are BNC, the old type where you screw them on, or TNC, and it looks like everything is BNC. So that looks like the connector I should order. Um, and then I look at the connectors I've got on the back of the G3, I've got two. On the back of my uh, comm radio, I've got one. On the back of the GPS, I've got one. And then on the other side, the back of the G5, I've got one. I'm not really sure what goes to the G5, but I'll figure that out. So those are the antenna runs that I think. So I'm going to order all that and then get the crimpers and the connectors and um, uh, learn another job skill, another skill set. Uh, splicing coax is certainly different than, than splicing other, other cables. Uh, then I notice a lot of people put a tray in here. Uh, for mounting instruments, some just put clamps to mount the instruments, others put tray. I do have the aluminum to put a tray up here, so that seems like a reasonable approach. And the other thing I notice is that most builders are putting a bracket or something to support the radio extensions. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is when I build my extension down here for the um, push-pull throttle and mixture cables, I'm going to build that across, support it to the frame, and then build some type of attachment to support the radios, and that should work. And I believe the fire extinguisher mounts on the bottom of that. Um, so I think I've got enough knowledge to move forward and get that done. So I'm going to order my coax cable, my connectors, my connecting supplies, and then start working on the tray, on the, uh, the bracket and the tray. Uh, I've taken out what I think are the parts that I'm going to need. Uh, this is your sub-panel mount, which will have your push-pulls in it. Uh, this is the radio support brackets, which I'm sure, I, I believe they go up here. And then this is what they call your push-pull or sub-panel reinforcement. Um, and this is forward-aft. It's going to go up here and we'll see how these go together. I'm referencing a couple pages in the parts manual. First you've got the instrument panel installation 
And then down here, you've got a section that says refer to subpanel. And this is on uh, 10F01 and 10F02. Then you've got 10F03 and 04, which is the radio or the subpanel uh, mount showing your subpanel and then this bracket assembly here that goes up to the radios. I also have the subpanel radio mount text on page 121. Okay, I've got my subpanel cleat coat in. There's actually a, a nut plate here that is supposed to have been drilled through this subpanel, so I have to reset that nut plate, but that's not a big deal. So that's sitting in place. Then you come over here, and you can see that this is, uh, this is that side panel that's supposed to sit up top, but if you look at it, it's, it's way too long. So I'm assuming this has to be trimmed to fit up here. So the next step is I'm going to trim that and, and see if that'll fit up. Well, this, uh, this upper support plate threw me for a, a loop. It's supposed to get set all the way back, but this cable run clearly is not giving me any room. And I didn't see the value of it here as it's not attaching to the frame anywhere up here. In some of the carbon fiber frames, there's a bar that goes up here that they can attach uh, this flat part to. But in this, this panel that I've got, it doesn't have that. So what I did is I just cut that bracket short. I'll secure it here. Then I created a, a, a angle up here so I can attach it to this floor plate. So this whole bracket will be supported on the back. And then I'll create another fab bracket that'll go underneath this and support the radio stack. Maybe I'll put some rubber grommets up there just to, to, to dampen the, the support. Um, I'm not 100% sure if this is the way you're supposed to do it, but I, I, I've got to get a bracket on the radio. I've got to get this mount in to mount the fire extinguisher and get this control cable uh, mounted. And engineering-wise, it's all supported. It's all tied in, and it'll be supported by this uh, cage beam up here. So it looks like it'll work, and uh, I'll just keep trudging forward. In building the uh, subpanel, I've got to look at where I'm going to put my constant, uh, my prop control. And tip typicals have throttle prop mixture. I also want to see if my alt air uh, cable would fit if I had the three controls for my engine. And it does not look like there's going to be room here. So something like that. I have to get a prop control cable which is a whole nother story. Uh, Rands only sends the two for fixed pitch. So I'm waiting for that, but it looks like I'll have the three engine control here and have to move my uh, alternate air somewhere else. Well, I'm gonna end that one here. I wanted to make it a quick one and get some content out because I haven't had a video out in a while. Got behind on it. Uh, I've got more content to go. As you can see, I'm a little further than where the video ends. Um, but that went well. Uh, it was 8.8 .8 hours to put those nut plates in and build that frame. So that brings my build time to 834.6 hours. Um, and I'll try and get on the nut shortly when I get into the coax cable and some of the wiring. So thanks for watching. And remember, dream it, just build it.